Today in the shop, we have a set of 69 912 heads. We haven't really covered anything in the four cylinders on the channel yet. And these heads usually need a lot of work. So today we're going to kind of go over, do our inspection and quoting on these heads, take some measurements, take a look at what's going on and give a price to the customer to see if we get an approval to see if we can bring these back. So one of the big problems that you face with these heads, other than the fact that they're all going to be 50 plus years old, is the dimensions from the top of the cylinder head to the ceiling surface. Factory Porsche, the dimension from here to here was 9.5 millimeters. And you were allowed to machine it to a maximum depth of 10 millimeters and then discard the cylinder head. So what a lot of machine shops would do is they would machine this to clean it up for whatever reason. It was worn, it was old, and then they'd go, oh, if we just surface this cylinder head right here, we can restore this dimension. Now, that creates a whole bunch of different problems because the main reason why they wanted to discard at 10 millimeters had nothing to do with this boss measurement down to here. It was changes in valve train and changes in compression is what they were concerned about. The more you machine this ceiling surface, the closer the cylinder head moves towards everything. Now, being a pushrod motor, you have pushrods that are going to be running up through these holes here. And as that cylinder head moves closer down to the top of the barrel, those push rods are going to be sticking out further. That's then going to play with your valve train geometry. And so it's going to create a lot of other problems. Now, I've seen these heads to the point where this one actually isn't too bad. I calculated it's had about a half a millimeter machined off the overall thickness of it. But I've seen it where these bosses have been machined down to zero and uh, engines have had a calculated compression of uh, in excess of 13 to 1. So when you're looking at a set of these heads, the size of this boss says a lot about how much work has actually been done to them. Okay, the next thing I want to look at is my valve seats right here and here. And already I can see just by looking at the seat how much it's being cut. Uh, you can see right here, this is where the seat height started and this is where it's finished down here. So with that valve coming in, it's a lot lower than it should be. So it's being pushed down in. Seats on these are, don't have a lot of material to, go, to be cut off and typically do need to be replaced. And I have the same problem on the intake valve as well, where the seat is also cut below. And you can see how the valve is actually recessed into the seat. Uh, I can verify that by measuring my installed heights, which I've already done on this particular cylinder head. On my exhaust side, my installed height of the valve, and what that means is bring my valve in and measure from the seat to the back of the valve. Uh, this one's actually almost two millimeters too far out and the intake is one millimeter too far out. So a combination of things is already starting to happen with these heads as far as rocker geometry is concerned. We have cylinder heads that have been cut, so that means the head has moved down and our valves are sticking too deep in to the cylinder head area, so that means our rocker is having to lift up and up and up. And what it's doing is it's changing the geometry of this actual adjuster. So this adjuster now has to be backed out further and further. That creates another problem that we'll get into when we look at our rockers. But what's happening is that rocker is going to end up looking like that. And so when it's operating, it's going to be placing a lot more stress on the valve and on the rocker as well. So on this set of heads, somebody has already put in a set of guides. And the way I can tell from that is mainly this top design right here is different from the original and also the material. But one of the things that I noticed when I started to inspect my valves is we have brass transfer onto the exhaust valve stem. And you can see how it's opposite at the top and then at the bottom down here. And what's happening, there's two things going on there. One, 
we've got changes in rocker geometry and where the valve is embedded too deep. So that rocker arm is actually pushing harder on the valve than it should do. The other thing that I noticed is the clearance between the exhaust valve stem and the exhaust guide is supposed to be 0.05 to 0.08 of a millimeter. I usually like to set them a little more on the loose side than on the tight side. When I did my bore calculation, so I took my inside bore gauge measurement, put it down into the, into the guide and found a spot that wasn't all galled up to measure, I only had a clearance of 0.03 of a millimeter. So what happens is on these heads, everything expands a lot when they heat up. And if you don't have that bigger clearance in there, then stuff like this happens where you get brass transfer. So we're actually, this is the valve guide welding itself to the exhaust valve stem as the valve moves up and down. So even though the guides uh, look like they're relatively new, and from a clearance standpoint, they're more like a water-cooled car. So if I rock my valve, I have almost no movement at all in that valve. Normally on these with an air-cooled engine, I want to see a good 0.05 rock back and forth. Otherwise, this is the problems that you're going to have where it goes up, grabs the valve guide, and eventually it's going to seize. I've also seen on these heads as well, because on the intake side, there is not a lot of material here for the guide to hold. And I've seen these being put in too tight, and when they heat up, the intake valve grabs the guide, whole guide starts moving up and down, and then I've actually seen it to a point where it's hogged out the clearance is here to where the head's junk and I can't even put another guide back into it. So from a valve standpoint on the stems, these are done anyway and pretty much the condition of this one with all the chips, nicks and damage I wouldn't want to reuse. But we're also going to be looking at at least exhaust guides in it and then reaming the intake guides. They're also on the tight side and seeing if we can save the surface finish in there. So that's, we finished looking at the cylinder head side of things and we're going to look a little bit more in detail with the valve guides. Now we've already looked at this exhaust one. Another point on this one to discard is the wear and pitting on the back. Uh, these are case hardened and we can trim the backs but we're limited. Uh, we couldn't trim two millimeters off of it because we'd be through the case hardening anyways. Uh, so that's in the seat area. Uh, we've looked at the stem already. This one is really beat up and the rest of the exhaust uh, valves look pretty much about the same. Uh, the last area that we want to look at is the face, sealing face of the valve and the margins. Now, the intake valve, if we look at the stem on it, it's not super, super horrible. It could polish, uh, polish up on it. However, when we look at the margin, which is this part right here, this is what stops the valve from burning. And this spec here should be 1.7 to 2.3 millimeters thick. And this is a measurement of how many times these valves have been cut. So if I take my vernier calipers and measure that margin, it's just got to get right on the edge. We're showing a margin thickness of about one millimeter. So this valve, even if the stem was savable and we could polish it, it's still a discard because of the thickness of this margin. Similar problems on the exhaust valve, where it should have a thicker margin. It should be two to 2.3 millimeters. And when we're measuring that, it's right down there. It's at 1.9 millimeters. So it's under that spec to begin with. But there's so much going on with the exhaust valve, it's really completely dead. So next thing I want to look at is valve springs. Now, I've just grabbed three valve springs. And the first thing we can see is this spring is a lot lower than these springs. Uh, so that's a pretty much dead giveaway there that the set of springs is pretty much on its way out uh, when you've got this much difference spring to spring. But I wanted to confirm on our pressure side of things because that is ultimately the most important part of it, where we are at and what it should measure. 
So I have set our clearance here with my spring pressure measurement to 30.15 millimeters, which is what the factory asks for full compression testing. We should be reading at 213 pounds, plus or minus five and a half pounds. So with the first one in, we're gonna go ahead and compress it. First spring, still undersized, we're getting 170 pounds. So it's approximately 30 pounds off of, or 40 pounds off of where it should be. Now, if we take the one that has a lower spring height, go ahead and install this one, and it's just barely making 150 pounds. So that one is about 60 pounds off of the pressure that it's supposed to be. That much of a split between valve springs I would never use, but being that far off of our nose pressure, uh, it's going to create problems at our idle pressure or resting seat pressure. That is supposed to be approximately 80 pounds. Uh, when I did measure it at the installed height, I was getting around 50 pounds. So that means the valve is not going to seal as well as it should do uh, and is going to increase the wear on that valve due to burning and gases leaking past it. One of the last things that we're going to look at today is the rockers. And this one, I've already taken some of the, the pieces off of it. Uh, usually what goes on with these, and these suffer a lot of wear and problems, is the rocker shaft for one. You can see where this is all gold up on the shaft. And also one of the other things that these suffer from is cracking. Uh, they get over tightened over the years by heavy handed people and it tends to crush it right here. And so what we're looking for is small radial cracks that are coming out. This one's got a crack starting right there. And I think that was about it. But pretty much this one is done. Now, these rockers do not have any bushings in them. And we can see that in the bottom of this rocker, it has suffered some wear there. Now, we have a company that rebuilds these for us. And what they do is they oversize the inside of the rocker. And then they'll hard chrome and centerless grind the rocker shafts up so that they can make up for that clearance. It does mean that we have to ream this center support bushing, but that's really about it. It's pretty straightforward operation. Uh, a lot of this wear is due to the issues that we see on the cylinder head. So when we have valves that are seating up too far and heads that are being cut too much, what tends to happen is the rockers, and if we look at this and see how much stick out we have on that rocker adjustment, is the adjuster needs to be backed deeper and deeper into the rocker shaft, or the rocker arm, sorry. Now, in the center here, we have a lubrication hole, and that lubrication is coming from the push rods. There is oil flowing through the lifters, up the push rod, and right here, this little piece of lead is blocking an oil galley that is drilled through to lubricate this shaft. When the adjuster, and I'll crack this nut in a minute, which this nut's pretty much done, when the adjuster has to be moved all the way up, what happens is inside this elephant's foot right here is a small section that allows the oil to come into it and then flow down through the rocker, sh uh, rocker arm to lubricate the shaft. As this elephant's foot is adjusted deeper in, it starts to block this passage off. I've seen them where these are literally backed and they're a quarter turn off and they completely block this oil flow right here. So without oil, it's pretty easy to see how our rocker shaft can go all up. This damage here is because the rocker is actually seizing on that shaft in operation. So there's consequences to our cylinder head setup, to our valve train, which overall affects the performance and longevity of these cylinder heads. So just loosen that lock nut on. And if we back this elephant's foot out, and they call it an elephant's foot because it looks like an elephant's foot. We can see here, here is our cutout on that adjuster. And what that is, that's where the oil flow, where it comes through this hole, up 
through the adjuster, and then it's supposed to flow out of that little hole area there. And then if we look inside our rocker, down in there, we can see where that hole in the threads continues through to the um, lubricate the shaft. So the ideal spot on these to be centered is, is about five full turns down is normally what I find. So if we bring it up, I'm going to half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five. That's about where the adjuster should be. And if we look at the distance with the lock nut on it, compared to one that I haven't touched, we can see the difference on the installed height of that adjuster. And so we are limiting oil flow because of all the issues in the cylinder head. The last thing I'm going to look at on my rocker is we can see right here is the amount of wear that we have on that rocker. And so the top of the valve where this sits has been wearing into this pad. Uh, these pads are not that thick. They can be resurfaced. Uh, if you go through the hard facing, then they have to stellite weld them up to be able to save them again. And these are a pretty expensive piece. These are about $250, $300 a piece on these rockers, brand new. They are still available. Uh, and but they can be rebuilt so this damage here doesn't look like it's gone through the hard facing I'll let my rocker guy look at it first uh, once I send it all into him so even though a lot of stuff is worn out it's all pretty much saveable um, the heads as far as 912 heads are concerned are actually in fairly reasonable condition in that they haven't been machined so much that they're unusable uh, we will have to use probably a 0.75 millimeter shim under the barrel to restore the machine surface. I will need to CC the heads just to confirm the chamber uh, dimension so we can do a calculated compression for it. Guides, valves is all still available. Springs are all still available. Uh, they're fairly reasonably priced. Uh, seats not a problem. I have seats made to my dimensions anyway because once I cut the seat out I'll have to see what size I end up having to machine the pocket and we'll have seats made to put in that and then we'll recut the valve surfaces and set the installed heights. But all in all it's savable. It's just going to need some parts and machine work.